What's up YouTube, Dylan here. Today we'll be showing you how to install a Summit Top and Tilt Kit on your Kubota tractor. There's also a separate video on installing the rear remotes that'll be linked up in the description. The folks at Summit have decided to partner with the channel, so you can use our coupon code BROL to save 5% off. Here's an overview of what comes in the kit. We got both of our hydraulic cylinders, our four hoses, and a bunch of fittings. The exact cylinders we went with were the 18 to 26 inch top and the 16 to 24 inch side. Start by grabbing the two double-ended male fittings, and we install them on the top of the cylinder. Tighten with a 5 8 wrench. Use a light dab of hydraulic oil to lubricate all the fittings. The instructions call for hand tight and then a quarter turn with a wrench. Repeat this process for the second cylinder and then we can move on to assembling the hoses. Grab one of the fittings that has the o-ring on it and then we're going to screw the quick disconnect fitting onto that with a little bit of hydraulic oil. Inch and a sixteenth. Once the fitting is tight, we can flip it over in the vise, and then the other end of this gets connected to our hydraulic hose. Fitting is three quarters. Now repeat these steps for the other three hoses. Now we can head back to the machine. We don't have a shot of taking off our top link, but pull the pin and then slide in the pin and install the new hydraulic top link. For the tilt cylinder side, there's a cutter pin that holds in the lower pin, and then there's a quick disconnect pin on the top. Once both of those are removed, we can slide that off and then replace it with our new hydraulic version. We place the lower pin in the highest hole as that would give us the most upward tilt on that side. With both cylinders attached, it's now time to hook up our hydraulic hoses and do some kind of test routing to figure out what fittings we need to put into the cylinders to keep our hoses nice and safe. So we're talking through what we want to do with these fittings. It comes with 45s and 90 degrees, and then the ones that are in there. I think we're leaning to doing a 90 on these. It'll keep that nice and out of the way, not behind the moving tractor. Versus here, it can get caught and pulled on things. I think what we're gonna end up doing, flipping this cylinder around so the valve body is fixed so let's give that a try real quick see if we like it doing some cable testing we're really unsure on this one we have to bang between straights 90s 45s so we hooked up this three point so we can actuate it and start seeing what we want to do. All right, so that hits the seat. The hose is limiting the travel. After much deliberation, we ended up going with 90 degree fittings for all four of the hoses. Each fitting gets a dab of oil and then everything is assembled hand tight. And we'll come back with an 11 16 wrench and give everything its final torque. All right, so we're tightening down these fittings. They're 11 16 You really, you want to snug them. They should be good. But this is one of those things you're going to have to inspect it for leaks. And you don't want to mess it up. So don't go Hulk mode. Give it a good firm snug and then uh, give it a test. 
The top ones are three quarter, a little bit bigger. The hose placement we think is good. All right, we're on the lower ones, 11 sixteenths as well. We're ready to test. Bow, 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 bow. Just starts shooting all the lead out everywhere. <laughs> Shut her down. <laughs> Shooting hydraulic oil. Mm. <laughs> oh, these lowers. Oh, we never tined them. <laughs> <laughs> We're retarded, bro. We never even tined them. If you have any leaks like we did, tighten up the fittings and then fire up again. We did some testing here and ran it through the full up and down of all the cylinders to see what happened and see how our routing did. It's a little tight up here with the top link all the way in, but we never run it that short, so it's not a problem. Oh, you're getting longer. After you do some testing, you're going to want to check the hydraulic oil level. In our case, we were a little low after filling up those two cylinders and all the new hoses, as well as the hoses and all the extra fittings for the rear remote kit that we installed at the same time. It ended up taking about four ratio rights to get it topped off. That's about 2,000 milliliters or two quarts. Make sure to tighten up the fill cap, and then we're on to some final assembly shots. Here's a quick demo of the range of movement that we had with this kit and our box blade. This thing is an absolute game changer. If you use the box blade a lot, the ability to adjust it so quickly and easy basically turns it into a mini dozer. We did do one additional upgrade on this kit. After we used it for a bit, we realized that some nylon hose sleeve protectors would be great for these hoses. So we ordered some from Amazon. These are the one and a half inch size, which are a little bit tight around the fittings, but kind of work okay for the hoses. So you might want to buy this size or you might want to go to a two inch sleeve if you wrap your hoses. The key to getting it in the inch and a half sleeve is to offset the two fittings as you slide it through. I ended up having to cut the zip ties that held the hoses together too so that they could go through the channel offset. Another tip with feeding this on is to scrunch it up on there and then pull it straight. It cuts easily with a pair of scissors and then just make sure to use a lighter and melt the end so it doesn't fray. On the one we filmed here, we melted the end after pulling it up onto the sleeve, but on the second one we were smart enough to do it before, which was much easier. Gus cam, dun dun dun, puppy cam. How are we looking? We repeated that process for the second set of hoses, and then it was all wrapped up. That's all for this one. We'll see you next time.